In this lesson we learn about dome light. Dome light is often used for image-based lighting or IBL. In this popular lighting method, you take a high dynamic range image or an HDRI and use it as your light source. Hey folks, welcome to MoGraph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to Redshift for 3ds Max. It's a massive 13 hours course in which we explore all the aspects of Redshift for Max thoroughly. Make sure to check it out, the link is in the description. Also be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. So when you create a dome light you basically get a virtual spherical or hemispherical light source around your entire scene, then you assign a 360 degree HDR image to that sphere or hemisphere and you would get a nice beautiful lighting based off of the color and intensity information from that textured that you have assigned to your dome light. If I start IPR, You notice because we don't have any light source in the scene and the default light is disabled in the render settings. We get a dark render. Let's add a dome light from the Redshift toolbar. Always remember that the dome light encompasses the entire scene. By default we get a simple white virtual sphere around our scene. We can increase its exposure by one stop to get a better exposed render. And now we have a basic lighting. We actually want to map a texture onto the dome light. That's the whole point of having a dome light. So click on this browse button. In your project files, you can find this HDRIs folder. I have a bunch of HDRIs from hdrihaven.com, a great resource for free HDRIs. Make sure to go to their website and support them financially. They have tons of high quality free HDRIs. For now, let's load this dry field 4K HDRI. and now we are using the color information of that texture to lit our scene. And as we are in ACES, let's make sure our color space for the texture is set to linear sRGB. You can see the combination of dome light and HDRI textures will result in an effortless, extremely realistic lighting. Imagine there are hundreds of free HDRIs on the web, each with different attributes and color information, and each one will result in a different lighting. We'll try a few different HDRIs later on. Before that, Let's learn a few basic things about dome light. First, you probably want to rotate your HDRI around to get different looks, and you can achieve that by simply rotating the dome light in the viewport. And because this particular HDRI has a shining sun, we can control how that sun will affect our scene and the direction of the shadows. You can also flip the map horizontally by enabling this flip checkbox in the dome light options. Let's do that and set the rotation on Z to 10 degrees. To get this nice shadows and a clear sky of the background. To control the overall intensity and brightness of the dome light, you can use this exposure value. Let's try minus one, zero, one, two, and three. Let's get back to one as it gives us a well-exposed render. We can get out of our main camera and move around in the scene to get a better feel about how the HDR image is being mapped onto the dome light. Pretty amazing, let's get back to the camera again. This map type drop down is fairly important, make sure the mapping type is correct. Different HDRI images might come in different mapping types, angular, cubic, spherical or mirrored ball. This one has a spherical mapping method so that is what we will use. There are also some basic color correction options here available as well like gamma, hue and saturation. You can also tint your loaded HDRI image with a color.
If you don't want to see the dome light or the texture itself in the background of your scene, you can simply uncheck this Enable Background under this Environment section. You notice the dome light still affects the lighting but it's no longer visible in the background, let's make sure that's not the case for now. We have this Alpha Channel Replace checkbox, by default it's disabled and that means the dome light affects the Alpha Channel. In the Render view, if I select the Alpha Channel, you can see the dome light is contributing to the Alpha Channel. Let's enable Alpha Channel Replace. And now as you can see the light is not contributing to the Alpha Channel and we can control how much we want our dome light to affect the Alpha using this Alpha value. For now, let's disable it and get back to our RGB render. Finally, using this backlight section, you can define a separate background image while still having the defined HDRI affect the lighting. Basically, you can render a custom backplate texture as your scene background instead of the dome map. Let's enable it and try a few backplate images. Obviously, the picture you choose here needs to match the lighting from the HDRI map, and some HDRIs come with their own backlight images which can be very useful. And then there are some basic color correction parameters for the backlight. We talk more about backplates, HDRIs, and integrating 3D geometries onto HDRIs later on. For now, this should be enough. Let's turn off backplate and get back to our old simple HDRI map. While we are here, let's try a few other HDRI maps to see how just changing the HDRI map can give you a totally different lighting. Let me duplicate the current dome light and disable the first one for now. And load this Wasteland Clouds HDRI. For this one let zero out its exposure and set its rotation to 105 degrees. And this will result in a completely different lighting. Let's create a duplicate again. Disable the previous one. And this time load this Venice Dawn HDRI. Set its exposure to minus 1 and rotation to 55 degrees. Now we get this darker close to sunset or sunrise lighting which is amazing. Let's make one final duplicate and disable the previous one. This time load this Moonless Golf HDRI. Set the exposure to minus 1 or 0 and rotation to 130 degrees. And now we get this beautiful nighttime render. So you can see the power of dome light in combination with different HDR images, beautiful realistic effortless lighting. For now let's disable this one and enable our first dome light and let's go for a quick final render. Open up the render settings. Change the resolution to 1152 by 1200 pixels. Change the UI mode to basic for now. And let's increase the bucket quality to high and make sure denoising is enabled and change the engine to all to single which is a bit more accurate and production proven compared to optics albeit slower and it is also not real time and will be applied after the render. 
let's go for a final render in the render view and see what we get. So here is our render. I've already rendered the next three dome lights as well. Let's take a look at them. You don't have to use dome lights only for exterior shots, there are tons of HDR images taken from interiors that can be used with any types of scenes, and as we go through the course you notice I tend to use them with all types of scenes, they are extremely robust and powerful. So in this lesson we learned about Redshift Dome Light, see you in the next video. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com or our Gumroad page at gumroad.com slash mographplus and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, Arnold, Corona, V-Ray, Redshift, Octane and so on. See you in the next video.